test crew here. The other day I got an email that I just couldn't ignore because it promised me a zero crash quadcopter. You know, I actually already have a zero crash quadcopter. Well, that's hardly fair because it's a zero fly quadcopter. Fine. Anyway, I went ahead and ordered it and here it is. It's the QR Series Infra X from Wakera. You know, according to the box, it's actually got some technology that I might share with the AR drone. Anyway, if it works as advertised, this could be a real boon for beginners. Well, let's find out. All right. Normally, it would be Tekkenstein sitting here behind the bench to walk you through this because he understands all those nitty-gritty technical details a lot better than I do. However, in this case, there aren't supposed to be any nitty-gritty technical details. So you... Here we go, the moment of the big reveal. Wow, it's a little itty bitty guy. Isn't that cute? All right, well, let's start with the aircraft itself. All around the perimeter here, we've got infrared sensors. That's what's supposed to keep it from crashing, I guess. And then here on the belly, we've got our ultrasound sensors uh, for altitude hold. And it looks like we've got a little cage here for the battery. Okay, let's see what else we got. Well, right here, we've just got an adorable little charger. It takes, uh, looks like it takes five volt DC in, and it looks like it can charge two batteries simultaneously, which is actually pretty slick. Got a plastic Ziploc bag here. Let's open this guy up and see what we've got. Okay, it's a USB on one end with a little, oh, I get it, I get it. This is for that little itty bitty charger. This side plugs into like your computer or something for power, and this supplies voltage to the charger. Very cool. Another little Ziploc bag. Uh, this one contains a bind plug, which I'm sure Tekkenstein will know how to use, and something that looks like a little screwdriver here made out of plastic. Now I cheated and looked ahead. On the aircraft here, underneath the bonnet, there's a, a knob you can adjust to affect the sensitivity of the gyros, and also two switches you can flip to turn the infrared and the ultrasound on and off. So this little guy will probably come in handy for that. Here, we've got the little itty bitty battery. That seems pretty self-explanatory. I'll plug it in and charge it, and then put it on the aircraft and fly it. Now this last thing really kind of gets me excited. The kit comes with really a fully capable uh, hobby radio. It's the Devo 7 in this case. There were a couple of different options when I purchased it. This is just the one I went with. Anyway, this has got a 15 model memory. It's on 2.4 gigahertz. So this is, you know, perfectly serviceable little radio. I kind of like that. So if you're getting into the hobby, this can be your first bird, but then you can use this transmitter with other aircrafts. One more thing I wanted to mention about the radio here is that it doesn't come with batteries. It runs off of eight double A's, but they aren't included, and that's not mentioned on the box anywhere. And then underneath that, we found this little cable here, some sort of a serial connector. Uh, I don't think we'll be using it. And the last thing that officially came in the box was the instruction manuals here. I was a bit worried at first because there was a lot of Chinese on here. However, when I dug down deep, I found that there were two separate DVDs, one for the uh, Devo 7 transmitter and one for the little aircraft. And those have got English manuals on them, so you're good to go there. Now let's take a look at those two discs that came with the, uh, the unit here. First, I'll show you the manual for the aircraft itself. Okay, as you can see here, we've got English and Chinese versions of the manual available. I'm gonna go with English, because that's the language I speak. All right, so as you can see, you just click through here. It's the user's handbook. There's a table of contents. Give you some helpful tips here, like uh, do not wash your aircraft in the sink. And of course, never drink and fly. This is kind of slick. They've got a page here with a table for each of the different Devo radios, and they tell you which switch corresponds to which function of the aircraft. So it's really pretty handy. All right, and so here we've got a nice diagram which points out all of the different components, controls, and other elements that are underneath the canopy. So anyway, as you can see, it's a pretty complete manual, and they've even got exercises for people who are new to flying to try out. So now let's take a look at the manual which came with the Devo 7 radio. All right, when you put the disc in, it brings up this uh, nice little menu here with a list of all the different Devo radios. So I'll go ahead and click on Devo 7 because that's the one we're using. And I guess it opens the folder for you where the manual's located. That, that's frankly kind of lame, but 
Anyway, it does have what we need, which is the manual, again in English and Chinese. And here we go, another PDF. So you can see the uh, Devo 7 radio there. Let's go ahead and scroll through this. We've got the table of contents, which itself goes on for several pages. Then we get into general information, safety precautions, a list of specifications, diagram of the radio itself. Anyway, this goes on for pages and pages, so there's tons of good information in here and more than we're going to need to make this little aircraft fly. Alright, as long as we got the computer out, I figure we try the battery charger too. So we take our uh, strange little cable here with the USB connector on one end, then we plug the other end into our uh, charger here, then we just take the batteries and plug them into the sides. Now maybe this is an example of me being easily amused, but I just love the fact this thing can charge two batteries at once. Isn't that cute? Well, all right, we've got our batteries charged. Let's take this little guy out and see how it flies. In order to test the capabilities of this new aircraft, we wanted to find a location that offered a unique collection of terrain and geometry that would fully test the capabilities of the infrared and ultrasound sensors. It's a skate park. Well, I know it's a skate park. Let's go flying. Okay, so I'm flying the craft with no throttle and no yaw, just sticking it around right now, and it, it automatically is compensating for the ground level. As far as collision avoidance, yeah, I'd say so-so. It's doing it as long as you're approaching your object, you know, slow enough. The only one thing I found that I had to grab the throttle for is once it gets too high off the ground, it just keeps going up, and up and up and up, and there it goes again. And if you bring it down, we just almost kill the throttle. Alright, well what I notice as I'm flying it is that the throttle doesn't work so much like you'd expect from another uh, multi-rotor. The throttle actually more seems to set the altitude at which it's going to hover above the ground. And so uh, as you fly it around over different objects, it just maintains that same altitude. Alright, obviously this little aircraft has got a lot of sophisticated control capabilities, but I was even surprised to learn you can control it with a keyboard. So the aircraft uses infrared sensors for collision avoidance. So I brought along a remote control, which is also infrared. I'm going to aim it at it and see if it moves. Let's find out. What happened there is the second I pressed the button, it moved immediately. It wasn't the proximity, it was definitely the button press. Now that was a lot of fun, actually. The centers and the sides need a little bit of work, but the ultrasonics, brilliant. Now what we'd like to do is call on Walkera to make a bigger version of this, like maybe a 450 or a 550 class, and maybe instead of infrared, use ultrasound all the way around so you get that smooth response that's not as twitchy as we got with the infrared. Almost like you've got a force field preventing you from colliding with the obstacles. And if you end up doing that, we want to test it. Well, hope you enjoy watching. See you next time. All right. Fly safe.